Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about some major cognitive distortions that can take place um, and just negative patterns of thinking that we can use reframes for. And I find that we talk so much about all these ideas on this channel and like patterns and things to be aware of. And I think it would be maybe really useful for some of you guys. And let me know in the comments below, because I always want to be as you know helpful as possible to everybody who's here to learn and grow and heal. Um, but I was thinking, you know, maybe some specific cognitive reframes for specific things that you might find yourself stuck on would be very beneficial. So that is what this video is going to cover. Now, we're going to cover major situations. We're going to cover things like when you feel rejected. We're going to cover things like when you feel like you're failing, um, when you make a mistake, and when you're feeling afraid of being abandoned. So I'm going to give you very specific cognitive reframes for these things. And I want you to keep in mind that our mind can sort of play tricks on us when it's especially trying to gain certainty. And it can sort of pigeonhole us into certain patterns of thought or it can derive patterns of thought from its own subconscious comfort zone based on like past experiences that are essentially being projected onto like almost like overlaid onto our current reality. An example of this could be if you saw your parents go through a bad divorce, maybe you grow up and you like expect relationships to fail, right? And so when you see a change in a pattern, your mind naturally jumps to an assumption like, oh my goodness, this relationship's on its way out, it's broken, it's gonna fail. And so the mind likes to do that, essentially. It likes to pull from past experiences, experiences, project onto current ones, and essentially assume at a subconscious level that these are the things that are going to take place. Now, it doesn't do this to hurt you. It does this literally to try to protect you um, and to prepare you for worst case scenarios. And so while it's well-intentioned, it sometimes can be counterproductive. And a lot of the times when these things go unchecked, they almost can create self-fulfilling prophecies because then we're constantly like, either accusing somebody or um, holding on too tight or pushing somebody away because we assume they're gonna hurt us or we sort of have these coping mechanisms to react to those overlays that can actually create problems in a relationship dynamic or in the workplace or with a friendship or you know, based on the context of the situation you're experiencing. So um, just some clear cognitive distortions that, that sort of fall under these categories. And, and um, cognitive distortions are very interesting when you get into them, but some of them are things like jumping to conclusions or mind reading is a form of cognitive distortion. Um, and it's essentially just that it's this overlaying or like assuming things um, about somebody else and their intentions or about their actions that usually has more to do with us than necessarily to do with them. Um, things like disqualifying the positive. So when we sort of um, get into a position where we reject positive experiences instead of embracing them. Um, so maybe if you get a positive response in the workplace, for example, from your boss, you go, oh, it's only because they're trying to be nice, right? So sort of this disqualification, there's many different forms of cognitive distortions. But if you want to do a deeper dive into that, um, I have an entire anxiety course that covers cognitive distortions and how to actually reprogram these things at the subconscious level. And it is our overcoming anxiety course. So you could check that out if you wanted to for free by clicking the link below. Um, but basically all these different things, these different forms of cognitive distortion can create patterns of thinking. And what I'm going to break down for you is like specific ones and specific reminders you can use to pull yourself out of that and also step into more solution-oriented thinking and sometimes more accurate thinking um, in a specific circumstance. So let's just say, for example, one of our first cognitive reframes or cognitive distortions that we would need a cognitive reframe to use would be somebody doesn't call you back. It could be a friend, a family member, it could be a romantic partner, it could be somebody you're dating and you start thinking thoughts about how you're not good enough or how you did something wrong and they're upset with you. These are two very common, um, specific cognitive distortions that I'll see people sort of come up with. And let's say it's somebody you're dating. You know, an example here of a cognitive reframe could be maybe we're not a match. Like, and I'm saying they never called you back at all, right? Maybe we're not a match. And I deserve somebody who wants to put energy into this relationship as well. And that would put you into more of a solution oriented mindset. And it's a good way of reframing the situation. So you don't go down the thought rabbit hole of negative spiraling and of making it mean something you really can't know, right? Like it, a lot of times it's like we take things and we go, oh, it's because I'm not good enough. 
chances are like somebody's on a different page in terms of their needs, their belief patterns, their programming, their own fears, what they're looking for in their life. Like there's so many different reasons, but isn't it interesting that our mind goes there first or many people's minds go there first. Now, let's say instead that we go down the other pathway and that somebody isn't calling you back and you start assuming they're upset with you or angry with you. Um, a great cognitive reframe or different way of approaching this would be to think something like, you know, I've been showing up as, as a friend very well. You can evaluate and check in. Um, and if it's if there's something they need to communicate to me about, I'm happy to listen and it's their responsibility to do. And so it's this reminder that like, hey, if there's a problem that somebody has and if you can't think of what it might be, that onus actually falls on the other person to communicate. And when you evaluate and check in and see, no, 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 my behavior has been good and I've been doing a good job of being a friend or a family member or whatever it might be, then it's it's much more difficult for you to go down that that rabbit hole of spiraling and assuming at a subconscious level that you did something wrong, somebody's upset with you and putting yourself in that position. And just to be clear, people who tend to think of that are people who usually went through a lot of punishment um, in childhood and, and felt belittled or small or things like that. Not because parents are bad in, in those situations, but just because of the parenting strategies that we're using, the impact they actually have on the subconscious mind, even though parents are probably trying to do the best thing at the time. Um, the next one is I didn't get the job and I'm a failure. And a much healthier cognitive reframe would be something like, I'll find something that's the perfect fit for me. And I trust myself to be able to show up and continuously put the effort in until I do. So again, just like solution oriented, you see in this. Um, another big one is I hate, I made a huge mistake and everyone is judging me. Okay, so maybe you're at work, you mess something up, something takes place. And a great reframe, especially as it relates to mistakes is it is normal to make mistakes and I will be accountable. And I can always ask other people for support too. And really the idea behind that is to normalize mistakes because guess what? They're gonna happen your entire life <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about it. You're a human, it's how things go. And the best way to always respond to mistakes is just to literally um, look at them, be accountable and create strategies for the solution and to take some ownership and learn from the experience. That's the best thing we can do. And that's one is I am going to be abandoned because something changed. Okay, like the pattern change, they are texting me less, whatever it might be. And a great reframe, reframe and reminder for this is it is normal for relationships to have ebbs and flows. And if there's a challenge, I can talk about it or state my needs and ask for reassurance. Okay. And just again, these reminders that put you into a solution oriented mindset and focus. Again, if you want to do a much deeper dive, if you find you have a lot of cognitive distortions, um, whether it's, you know, magnifying um, the big things, all or nothing thinking, um, disqualifying the positive, jumping to conclusions, mind reading, all these different things. Um, a great course that you can check out for free and download all the worksheets and all that stuff is um, our Overcoming Anxiety course. It targets anxiety literally at the subconscious level by reprogramming cognitive distortions, helping you find their source, finding ways to repattern them. So you can check those out for sure. Um, and hopefully this all makes sense to you. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next video.